Welcome to yeah. the first official episode of our show that has a name now as we are jumping into Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 on the PS5 and you are being treated to gameplay by our editor-in-chief, Sam Comrie. Hello, hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Talking about one of the greatest game franchises ever. That's right, I said it. Ever. Ever. You are being graced as well by a pretty silent audio track to avoid <laughs> copyright so you can get the real it's like ASMR skateboarding sounds but then that that is you know this is what you would get in a skate park this is the real this is just the real nitty gritty of skating not even music you just get no yeah. sound at all that's the real skate park experience. no mp3 player we're taking at all nothing no phones <laughs> just people existing it's like footloose but mp3 players aren't allowed <laughs> that's what skate parks are so you're playing the PS5 upgrade here that's our I second in a row of the PS5 upgrade we've got an ongoing theme so I guess talk about about it. What what's here? What have they added? What's changed? Uh, so they've upped the resolution. Oh, bailed a little bit there. Uh, took it from I think it was 1080p anyway, but now they took it 60 fps 1080p, uh, and then I think 4K 30 if you can have um, fidelity mode. I think I can't do it because it. I think I think it actually takes it up to what 120 fps actually, but mm. I can't do it because my TV doesn't output that. Only goes up to 60 unfortunately. But yeah, they've upped that. Um, haptics, so when you do reverts and electric stuff like that, a bit of more momentum behind those. It's quite cool, actually. The reverts quite satisfying. And just general quality on life upgrades. I, even though the game plays great anyway, because they've got the Neversoft engine, like the remnants of it anyway, it just plays a lot better. So it's, it's nice to have a good Tony Hawk game for once. So was it worth the... So I'm getting, it was a free upgrade, I'm right, wasn't it? There was no cost associated with this whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you had the digital <laughs> deluxe version, which is like, I don't know, £60, pound, that. then you get the free upgrade. If you're like me and you just bought the standard game, which was like, I think, £34 pound when it came yeah. out on launch, then you have to pay £10 pound to get the PS5 upgrade. Oh shit, just fell over. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm a bit bummed out I had to pay more money just to get mm -hmm. like a frame rate upgrade, but that's just the way these things are now, unfortunately. Yeah, they could have bundled it with maybe some extra levels from Pro Skater 3 or 4 or something like that to at least try and give more justification. I think it just looks bad because so many other developers are just given free upgrades. You know, God of War got a free upgrade and it looks amazing. Yeah, it looks I've just started playing that recently and it's it's an awesome upgrade. Yeah, it's insane. It, it doesn't look like it came out a couple of years. I mean, or again, like this, it already looked like a good game, but it's strange. That, they, I mean, it's not strange. It's Activision, so I guess it's not strange. But because they did it, they kind of did a kind of similar thing with Cold War as well, didn't they? It was like the cross-gen bundle was an extra ten or if you like to do that. So, that, I mean, that also shows me that I guess people were paying that cross-gen bundle price. So they've, you know, so they've seen potential in it. So yeah, money talks. But you know, it could have been worse, I guess. Ten pound if for the upgrade. Oh dear! Oh, you landed it! Oh, oh mate! Oh my goodness! That's Incredible. just science right there, mate. I think, I, I, I don't know, Jinka, I can't ever imagine, like, oh, a new weekly sale on the PSN rather than DLC, it's next-gen upgrades that are going on sale. Oh, uh, don't, that strange. sounds like hell on earth. Yeah, so, I don't know. I guess, I maybe will, if they do add some extra DLC down the line, I'll maybe pay for it, because it would be actually, it's a bit of a tangent, but if they do, which I think they probably will, start remaking other Tony Hawk's games, it would be really cool to have them do what Hitman 3 did and have them just in one package, where you just kind of import yeah. it into the next game. That would be really sick. That would be good, because I think, I think the engine's pretty much going to stay as it is. I can't see them making any major improvements to it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they've nailed it on the head anyway, so I think it would just be in levels and stuff. I'd, I'd pay for like, the Tony Hawk Bros. Get 3 and 4 levels. I, yeah. I'm really hoping, like, I don't know if it happened, but if they remake Tony Hawk's Underground, which is my favourite, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Yeah, Underground, we said this other day, Underground 2 was my... I, I played Underground 1, but I remember playing Underground 2 first, and it was just... I know a lot of people don't like it, because it's basically just jackass the game. It became <laughs> less about the skating, but that's probably why I liked it. It would be cool to see it. I know a lot of people clamour for Underground 1 and 2 to come back. So, I don't know, I mean, I feel like this has sold really well. But in its Activision are actually, you know, say what you will about them, they are going pretty far in on this remake yeah. and remaster thing they're doing. They've got six, got a HD boost, and obviously Spyro and Crash, so and Crash got a Crash 4. So maybe we'll get the the true next Tony Hawk's Pro Skater that wasn't that awful one that came out. Jesus. And I mean, I never even played it because I just heard it was like bad straight out of the gate. I think the last one I played before that 
would have been Proving Ground, which was like 2008, yeah. I want to say. I think, I think it was Project 8 was the last one I probably played. Actually, I tell a lie. I actually, I owned for 24 hours Tony Hawk Ride. How was it? Was it good? I owned it for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Maybe you just, you, you're like, this is too good to stay in my house. Well, it was it was in the time where you could still trade in games at HMV. That's how long ago it was. Oh, my God. And um, I got it. It was terrible. And then I took it back the next day and claimed it didn't work. <laughs> and then and they let me trade it back. So I got Dead Rising 2 instead. I remember HMV used to do trade in price match. No, no, I didn't know if it was HMV. I think they did it. I remember, remember this. Asda used to do trade in. Oh, mate, that's ages ago. And they used to do like matching, like for other prices. So I'd be like, oh, I'm getting tenner from game. They'd be like, okay, we'll give you like ten fifty then. Take me back. Oh, I remember that. There should You've be got a some whole bargains on that. It's a whole podcast episode on trading in games because. I, I, Thinking about trading in games makes me incredibly depressed because it's a very dark period of my life. Trading in <laughs> games, like as a young child, like some junkie who needed a <laughs> fiver. I remember to get Ellie Noir, I traded in Portal 2, which oh, is literally my now. top five favourite game of all time. I mean, I love Ellie Noir, but is it is it worth trading in, in Portal 2? I mean, I enjoyed Ellie Noir, so I guess. I've got Portal 2 back on the PS3, so it's fine, but... Oh, that's fine, man. T -t -t what... Do you like this? I mean, obviously you like this game because you paid the tenor, but how does this hold up to... Obviously it's very different from Underground, it's a far more retro arcade Tony Hawk's, but... How, did this remaster kind of refill that itch that we lost with Tony Hawk's and now Skate's potentially making a comeback as well? Did this I, game... You know, I definitely you? think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a, like, you know me, I'm a big fan of like, skating games anyway, and... I was a bit cautious when this was coming out. Like after the kind of previous entries in the franchise and then when they said they were going to remake it there's always that kind of trepidation whether they can get it right I didn't know before like they started releasing details whether they were going to use the same engine or whether it's just going to be like, a complete new version um, but but when it came out like, I was so happy to see it it's basically just those original games just given like a new coat of paint it's the same gameplay same everything really it just looks better and I don't know, I think when people think of remakes, uh, most people would think it would be like a complete overhaul, but I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with them just giving it a new coat of paint like they have done here, keep the core values of the game intact. So yeah, it's definitely reworking that itch from all skating games, and it is interesting that EA have now said, yeah, we have a skate game <laughs> coming out at some point. <laughs> it's going to be Star Wars Skate. Oh, mate, can you imagine? Or you know what they could bring back? Uh, do you ever play that Disney skating game? That was I do. Shit, man. I, I do so remember good. that. My girlfriend likes that game. Whenever I mention Tony, she's like, yeah, that's nice, but have you played that Disney skating <laughs> game? That's sick. Oh, I'm pretty sure it ran on the same engine as, like, Underground. <laughs> I, I think it is, you know. That's I can't so remember. Good. I'm sure it's a Neversoft um, game. Yeah, because it was, like, Tarzan and Simba, and I can't remember. Because there was the level probably. where you're in Andy's bedroom, and that's, yeah, like, yeah. just pure skate mayhem. So that we might see a comeback with that. Skating is on the rise. Head Remaster back. Disney Skate, that's what we're saying. Did you ever do a bit of real life skating? Uh, yeah, not very well, but I have I have uh, done real life skateboarding. It's nice riding around, I've got to say, riding and listening to some tunes and feeling cool for all of four minutes is nice, <laughs> but um, <laughs> tricks and stuff like that. Like, I think no. the most I could do when I was at my peak skateboarder was like a kickflip, but not very well, and that's it. I think I had a skateboard and never got past about one mile an hour speed. I'm too <laughs> scared. I just, I don't know. It's just the idea of falling off things gives me the fear, so I avoided yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, pansy. I've always liked skateboarding as a sport anyway, and I've always like kind of followed it, and then even like if I can't do it myself, I'm still quite into it. I don't know, it's just something about like the kind of idea that you can just manipulate like a piece of wood with four wheels to do crazy shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's something kind of magical about that. I, I did say this game kind of made me go check up on what Tony Hawk's has been up to because obviously he, he did a lot of interviews and stuff with this game coming out. It was really cool. Just yeah, he's such a, a great guy who actually seems to have a real passion for these games and he's actually quite good at them as well, which is cool to see when you watch him play other people. So you don't really see that often. I feel like if there is someday a celebrity tied in with a game, you know. I don't know if the Mary Kate and Ashley game I've got on the PS1 when they go around the, you know, I was about to say the supermarket, they go around the shopping mall. I don't know if they were like big fans. Is a Mary Kate and Ashley game? 
Mate, there are multiple Mary Kate. Well, that's episode four. We've already got episode three <laughs> that I have a physical copy of Mary Kate and Ashley Supermarket something. I think it's like supermarket. Not supermarket. It's not Asda. It's like mystery shopping mall. <laughs> You're a mystery shopper. Uh, is no, that what I you're wished, trying to say? I wish that was what it is. It's about half an hour long. Uh, there's the- like a cooking mini game. There's a skiing mini game. There's a f- Pokemon Snap mini game. <laughs> So very they cursed. would be the most unsuccessful mystery shoppers. Everybody would just recognise them. Yeah. Oh my god, I just remembered, right? See, Mary Kate and Ashley has this. Like, this is classic jump cut play tangents. There was this <laughs> mini game where you had to like, run a fashion show. But because it was the PS1 and it could play CDs, there was, I remember you go on, it was like, oh, do you have your own music? Put in your CD to have Mary Kate and Ashley dance. So I bought like the most he- heavy metal album I could find, found it in the garage. <laughs> Smack that shit in and it was just Mary Kate and Ashley doing like a dance number to the heaviest metal <laughs> I could find so it's worth it on that front I'm going to have to look it up purely for that now you end up buying it emulate Probably. it emulate it when PS3 is re-emerged in the PS5 and I'm like we've brought Mary Kate and Ashley games onto our emulation store <laughs> so did you actually play the original Tony Hawk 1 and 2 games because I vaguely remember only skating on maybe two or three of the levels from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and that was like the <laughs> shopping mall uh, downhill jam and um, I, it was one of like the city levels I have very vague memories of playing as Spider-Man going around Aww. those levels I don't know, did you I play the first two? I did, so uh, my brother and I had a PS1 when we were younger and one way or another we got all the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 um, I think we spent most of the time on Pro Skater 2, though, like you said, because you had Spider Man stuff, and I can remember. Um, what level is it now? There's like a. I don't know if it's on this game, like we go on the level select. Um, there's like a, like a. Like a factory kind of level, and it's got like a lava mm-hmm. pit kind of thing. I remember that. I don't know if it's on this game. I could be wrong. <laughs> See, I remember like Underground 2 had weird. I mean, it was Underground 2, yeah. It was the last level of that game you went to hell in a spaceship, yeah. and like the Mayan <laughs> temple and shit like that. Like, I loved. Just when they went off the rails with it, and like New Orleans you know, and the zombies came to life. You know what? I think I'm thinking of Pro Skater Three for that level, but because um, because that was on the PS One as well. It, like surprisingly enough, I think we had like the first three games, and then when we got a PS Two, we got Pro Skater Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we had those games, and we used to play them quite a lot and take turns on it because we didn't have a second pad at the time, so we would always like kind of fight each other to see who could spend the most time on the game um, and that's where kind of the love for the franchise came from um, yeah and then when Pro Skater 4 came around that was like a pretty big turning point for me with the franchise because that was like the one I was like really obsessed with and would just like spend hours playing and then Underground came along as well and changed up the entire formula you could get sports cars and cause chaos and Bam Margera was there for some reason, mm-hmm. and then he's in the and then he's in the ground too, and it had like an actual storyline which I'd never seen like a skating game try and do before. Like, you can become a pro skater, but your friends will betray you along the way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's strange that Underground Three never became a thing. Cause I remember Underground Two was like it was huge. I've never really spoke to anyone who was in the game at the time who hadn't played it. I just remember everybody played Underground Two, especially. Because I remember the PSP version as well, and it just, mm, Redux. And then just after that, I don't know. Maybe I just I lost interest. But with the next generation, I think as well, Tony Hawk's games just slowly began to die. And then you were the only person that bought Tony Hawk's ride and <laughs> traded in a day later. So <laughs> I was the only sale. Yeah, it's was, it, was it that bad? Was it just broken? It was pretty bad. I mean, I think I think it's baffling just from a design point of view that he <laughs> still didn't enable the controller aspect of it if you didn't want to use the the ride controller. Like, yeah. I still have the core gameplay features for the franchise intact, but no, um, the ride controller did not work whatsoever. Like, it'd say, oh, lean, lean the board back and then swipe right to do a kickflip and or swipe left to do a heel flip. Oh, Jack, that just ran me over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then swipe left to do a heel flip. And you try it and it just does not do it. And I think most of my time with that game when I had it for that like 24 hours was just trying to get like through the initial tutorials and stuff because it was that unresponsive and then for whatever reason they made another game with that peripheral like yeah that's what really why? blows my mind it got <laughs> oh, that yeah. so that means it sold well don't say that i'm sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> that means other people were duped into it oh god yeah 
uh, one of my favourite aspects of this game in particular Ooh. and all Tony Hawk's games, I really like the... I do, although I do remember some reviews saying it was a bit basic, and I suppose it is, I really like the create a skater in this. Oh I man, yeah. I getting a pretty close, especially with the clothes selection as well. I remember I had like few outfits, I was like, that is generally what, what I wear on a day-to-day -day basis. I managed to <laughs> get a similar like to the Teddy Fresh hoodie I've got, not sponsored. Stuff like that. <laughs> you know, so you've got the vans on. So just, I mean, it's Tony Hawk's have always had like deals and stuff like that, but it was just there's not nothing beats create a skater. I don't think I've actually played this game as anyone but the person I've created. I think I've played as Eric Coston once for for some reason, but other than that, I do always play as my own skater. I will say I think the create a skater on this game could do with a bit more variety because like if you go compare it to the other ones, like from like the Prisket Four and Underground onwards. The stuff you could create on that's stupid, and maybe that's why they removed mm -hmm. it because it was ridiculous. But you could just like modify the hell out of your character's like proportions, skin color, yeah, hair, that with clothes, everything. WWE and stuff as well, you know, like SmackDown versus Raw used to be able to make absolute monstrosity yeah. of wrestlers, and they just. <laughs> I remember I had like a Slender Man character in 2009, just ridiculous. Now it's just like, oh, you can make them look a bit weird, but all games seem to have just gotten rid of silly stuff like that and it's a shame because I think that was part of the fun of the older Tony Hawk's games was getting a friend around for some local co-op. We used to do this thing, it was like right we've got five minutes, make the weirdest looking character you can and then we'll play and then <laughs> stuff like that's gone now you can just have like you know, I, I say I like the thing of the clothes and that but ultimately I, even looking at your pro skater, both of our guys look the exact same in the face <laughs> <laughs> Actually if I, if I stop my skater and try and look at his face oh, I've got it on like low camera angle, that's why you won't be able to see it. Just the neck below like the socks go. and the shoe combo, I'll give you that. Yeah, I gotta go with the classic bands. I mean, I do like wish there was a bit more variety of the shoes because I, because I'm trying to model it after me because that's what you do with these kind of things. I was like, oh, maybe they'll have the Nike like skate shoes, which yeah. I've got like a pair of, and they didn't. I was like, okay then. So Just don't like Converse don't in this like, game. Then. No Converse. No, there's though. no Converse. Uh, Converse are in every game as well. There's always a fake Converse. I think there's like a fake version, but there's no like actual pair. I'm sure you could get actual ones in the other games. I could be wrong. I can take a fake Converse at least. I'll take that. Right, I'm gonna ask you a challenge. Set your oh, biggest combo you can. Oh, damn. No pressure. Okay. You don't have to do it on this level. You can go. There's a level. Oh, you, you I can have. The, actually, that's a good point. Downhill there jam. Is a, then, there, I'm there is a level I do excel at. Mind you, I always go for downhill jam, I think. Let's take it old school to White Oh, House. the classic. El Clasico. Right, complete and utter concentration here. It's true. Oh, hey, oh. Nah, it's just, that's just test run. That's test run, right? <laughs> Practice run. There, there is a certain line on this map that, that works really well for tricks. I just need to find a way to get always, to that line. It's always for me the... The grind line on the other side just jumping back and forth and oh wall damn you know my tricks oh, <laughs> yeah gee. oh here we go there it is <laughs> who saw it Ooh. coming and he saw it he bottled <laughs> hang on we're gonna get it it's the speed it's all about the speed I want half a million <laughs> oh come on now it's all the pressure half a now. million or bust I did an amazing line on the other day so I managed to do like the massive backflip move while doing this and I was I thought I was like an absolute god. Were you ever there a you go, 110. <laughs> 110. American Wasteland, was that? I forgot about that. Came out. I forgot that came after. I, I, I actually never had American Wasteland. I had the, the Underground games. Um, yeah, those. And then I think I went straight... I think I skipped that one. I went straight to Project 8 when that came out. But I had the PS2 version of uh, Project 8, which was not great. It doesn't have the free roam options that are in the next gen versions of it, so all the levels are segmented in a more classic feel, which I, I, I guess it's kind of a good thing in a way if you prefer that. But when I saw the trailers for it, I was expecting to, like, naively to get the same experience as the as the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions at the time, and lo and behold, it was not that. <laughs> so you weren't suckered in by me. Do you remember the American Wasteland adverts? It even says it on the front of the box that no loading screens. No, I don't remember this. Oh, well, oh my god, that was the whole... I, if you go and watch any <laughs> promotional material for American Wasteland, even so on the front box, it's just like Tony Hawk's in front of some like Hollywood sign in the back, so it's like, no loading. Which basically translated to... Ah. It was a bunch of... It was like six or seven areas that were... So it was a huge open area, but each area was linked together by like a minute-long corridor. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it was more just they hid the loading screens in an empty and vapid corridor and it was like no loading which is probably I would have rather had a loading screen because mm. it was just nothing but I mean, with American Wasteland I continued the you know I had the story again and I think I might even got more like character focus like your your character everybody whereas underground 2 which is always called cause havoc yeah. and that's it whereas American Wasteland like yeah you've left your life to go to Hollywood and become a skater now Build your own park, but there, I remember there were so many parts in this game. It wasn't even just asking you to skate. It was like, go do some parkour and shit. I was like, right, this is the point. We've just abandoned the skate. <laughs> the concept of, of skateboarding. But I still, even when playing this game as much as I like it, I've not played it in a while. But I, part of me is just like, oh, I would like to be able to get off my board and you know blow up something. <laughs> Stupid as it is, I do miss the, you know, the the not the violence, I guess, but in Underground Two and One, you could like smack your board against the ground and. Is it the I'm rage in rage. Had? Yeah, and there was always like a bit of blood when you hit the ground in this. Or in this, it's just like a VHS kind of scratching, so they can keep. Can't have no violence friendly. for the kids, dude. Can't do that. I know, I know, but look at we turned out all right when Tony Hawk would snap his board and throw it out <laughs> of the stratosphere. I just miss that kind of stuff. I, I always feel in Philadelphia. Is this right? You're gonna get. You got one last chance to prove yourself. <laughs> I'm not having it any other way. I was promised Pound pro sweaty. skating. I will say even from this compressed stream via PS5, it actually does look quite a bit nicer. Which is strange because obviously it's just like a resolution and a frame rate boost. But I don't know if I'm just misremembering. It looks like there might be a slight <clears throat> tweak in textures. I don't know. It looks the lighting looks a bit better, but I, that could just be misremembering. I do think the textures are a bit more slicker. I mean, it looks decent anyway when I had the, um, the PS4 version. So I won't be surprised if you've just give them a slight tweak. How is it without the music? Are you enjoying the? It's uh, it's an experience. It's uh, <laughs> it's different. So they got 3D audio. That's probably worth a test. Actually, meditative skateboarding. Because <laughs> oh. the music is such a big. Oh, that would be a good one. Oh, the it's always the always been such a big part of these games as well, isn't yeah. it? Like the, oh, for I'm sure. Like, the soundtrack in this game is pretty killer as well. Even though it's, you know, I kind of grew out of that music a while ago. But even there's been some songs in this. I was like, that's going in the Spotify, and I love when games do that when FIFA used to be really good at it, but I've not found FIFA music good in a long time. But, you know, when you can hear a band and then you find a band from the game, you're like, oh, I'm going to go listen to that, like I said before. The last we start time with I listened Kelly. to FIFA music, it <laughs> will tell you like, how long ago it was. Um, I was really obsessed with the song Goodbye Mr. A by the Hoosiers when that came out. Yeah, and that, um, that was on like, was FIFA 6 or 7? One of those games, anyway. Uh, I liked it that much that I said to my brother, when you're out, can I borrow your copy of FIFA? And he thought, yeah, you can borrow it to play it. No, I just put it on in my room so I could go on the main menu and listen to that song over and over, because this was a time before Spotify. That is... That is very, very tragic. <laughs> what? A man's got to do what he's got to do for his... the console wasn't your... You know, if it was a PS4 blasting the jet engine, oh, you put music on, just... Which is what it was like playing... Actually, Probably is work as well. I've not played this since the PS5 came out and playing this game with that because I remember I, I got it on my birthday, which is like in September at all. And I was, like, well, I was always playing some Tony Hawks, and all you can fucking hear is just the PS4 jet engine over everything. It just kills it. It adds to the experience, mate. I suppose yeah, I mean, if in the airport level, it adds to it a wee bit. <laughs> Are you a competitive skater at all? Do you play online in this or anything? Uh, I've played a little bit of online in this, uh, get my ass absolutely handed to me because the people that play online on Tony are absolutely just immense, yeah, uh, just cool. put chaining combos together and and whatnot. I'm a bit more of a casual player, like, I think oh, like, I can hold my own enough, but playing online is just a whole different gravy. But it is good though, um, the modes they have put into it. I do wish there was like a free skate lobby where you could just kind of mill about with other skaters, um, yeah. there is a... They had that in skate, and I don't want to like do the comparison kind of thing, but they did have that in skate, and um, it's weird that even though this is a remake of an older game, just I don't know, give it a somewhat of a modern mode if you're going to do multiplayer. I it's nice that I'm, there's um, a yeah. local multiplayer as well. I'm awful at skate, like I'm horrendous at it. From the time I played Skate Free, I just couldn't get it. But the the, the kind of free roam co-op it had, that I mean, Skate Free, I don't even remember back when all the YouTubers started playing it. I think maybe PewDiePie might have started playing it and of course just everyone started playing it. And Skate 3 had this huge resurgence in sales oh, I did. years after it came out, which I, that was strange. They never capitalised on that and released another one. But And it was just, you know, because it had that free skate mode, it was just kind of like a meme fest. And it had that one jump where it was like, and it always had this, like, oh, who can break the most bones going down it? 
And I, for me, I just think skating games need to have a bit of fun with it. I don't know, there's something, yeah. as much as I like this game, like my friend, who, he was really into skate, not much, so much Tony Hawk's. He was like, oh my god, there's a new skating game out, and I played it like SharePlay with him. He's like, oh, this just isn't for me. And he couldn't really work out why it wasn't for him. Because he used to play, he played the shit out of Skate 3, he was really good at it. And he just loved it. And I think that might be why. There is just, there seems like there's a bit of personality lost with the remaster. As good as it is, and I think it is a really good remaster, and I hope to see more of it. It just does seem there's a bit of character that's been lost. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I mean, I think it's definitely more streamlined to just be about completing the objectives and just being within that experience. I think if it did have a bit more kind of levity, I mean, if you, were, I mean, I, I know there's elements of that anyway. Like you've got Jack Black running around as a security guard, running people over in this game. But <laughs> I think these games do benefit, as we've seen with the other like later installments, especially with, like with Pro Skater Three, where you can go to like Alcatraz and there's like a ghost you can play baseball with and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you just have those like breakups of of levity, it adds to the experience. It's weird because like this game's come around and then there's been kind of resurgence of um, the skating genre with um, Skater XL and Session and stuff like that. And th those two games, I oh, it's another kettle of fish with those two games. Especially Skater XL, I've got I've got faults on that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's another. Oh, so many episodes are just we got Mary Kate and Ashley sorted, Skater XL. Be here to the at least the end of the month for sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Never going. I guess just to round things off before I let you go back to the skating and practice your kickflips. What would you like to see in the future of? I guess well, I don't even know if this franchise. I guess Tony Hawk. I mean, this seems. It seems like Tony Hawk's is back. Yeah. Um, if he's not, it'd be a bit strange. I mean, I mean the game, not just not the entity. Tony Hawk's. <laughs> Tony Hawk has been he missing for this time. <laughs> he's came back. <laughs> Pulled a half life on us, but. What do you what, do you want to just keep seeing remasters or you know because that wait with Crash Bandicoot eventually they've had to go right okay we'll make a fourth one and it's been really well received we don't know what's happening with Spiral yet uh, do you want to just see more remasters or a fully fledged just new Tony Hawk's game but I guess there's anxieties with that because it could just be the same game with more levels which yeah it's cool but I think that's when we hit the point of this is just a DLC yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, uh, if they did like a Tony Hawk's Underground remaster, that'd be cool. But I think this game was made to kind of gauge the market on whether people would still be interested in Tony Hawk. And I think they've proved like enough people are still in love with this franchise. So I think they probably will be having talks about how to take the franchise forward with a new installment. But like you say, it's the, it's the worry of whether you can take what they've kind of nailed here and then translate that into a new experience because you don't want to change too much so it's an odd position that they find themselves in you just don't want to be rehashing the same thing but i'd be open to a new installment i mean there's so many places and locales in the world that that are so enriched with skateboarding history and embrace that culture that you can explore it and if they do decide to explore more kind of the levity side of it that they've had with the other installments that'd be cool but as for the genre as a whole I guess we'll see, like, if EA are making another Skate, that's cool. I've always been a, a fan of that franchise, Skate 1 and 2 especially. I mean, Skate 3, it has the better gameplay mechanics, but the actual game itself, like, like you were saying with this, there's not a lot of personality in that game. There's something oddly missing with Skate 3. But, um, yeah, it'd be, cool. be cool to see more, I mean... It's an odd one. We've had, as I say, we've had Skater XL and Session try to breathe new life into the franchise. And, and those games really do have an ardent fan base, as I've seen on YouTube and whatnot. But for me, it just doesn't quite capture it. But yeah, new Tony Hawk game, sure, let's do it. I, I, I'm going to be there day one, and regardless, I'm just that in love with Tony Hawk anyway. Do you think we'll get Shrek back as a playable character? You uh, never say never, dude. I mean, Spider-Man and whatnot was not in this game, obviously because of licensing now with Marvel and Disney, but you never know. We could have Darth Maul and Shrek be skating together once again. That's, that is the dream, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is the dream. 